Yes, so shall we start? No, I'm just going live first. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. Seems to be some problem. Tripti Jain, show us on. It's live. Yeah, no, no, it's not live. It is showing me live, but it's I. I need to check whether it is live on FB. Can somebody just check? It's showing. Or... It is showing. It is showing that it is live on FB. Correct. It's showing me here, but I somebody needs to check my FB page if it is live there. Okay, let me check. Uh, if you can just check my FB page so that I know it's live there. Yes, ma'am, it is live. All right, great then, no problem. Okay, so welcome everybody on a Thinking Thursday. And uh, today we have a wonderful lecture which is going to be on the role of homeopathy in general wellness by Dr. Manisha Lakhikar and uh, our very own Dr. Varsha uh, is going to introduce Dr. Manisha to all of us. So Varsha ji is going to introduce Dr. Manisha. So Varsha ji, please go ahead. Sure, yeah. Hi, good evening everyone. It's a very warm welcome to all of you. And of course, Dr. Manisha Lakherkar, our guest speaker for today. So Dr. Manisha Lakherkar, BHMS PG Home is a leading name in homeopathy. She is spearheading spreading homeopathy in Hong Kong through her basic and advanced level of courses at Academy of Classical Homeopathy Hong Kong. With her expertise and a specialization in helping patients with chronic and acute illnesses, She's treating with holistic, natural, and gentle approach in homeopathy. She's a very caring and sweet and a fine human being. And I can say this from my own personal experience. She's beautiful inside and out. So let us welcome Dr. Manisha with a round of applause. And Thank now I would so like much. to... Yeah, and I would like all Manisha. I would like to introduce you, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Tripti Jain to you. Yes, Dr. Tripti Jain. Dr. Tripti Jain is a clinical psychologist and occupational yes. therapist, a certified past life therapist, rebirthing expert who has been working for the last three decades in the field of mental health, a NLP trainer and EMDR facilitator art and movement therapist, dream analyst, recipient of many accolades for her pioneering work in the field of past life therapy through her acclaimed show, Raz Pichle Janamka. She has been creating magic with her mystic journey workshop, which is I think soon, uh, I think there's one more workshop uh, coming up soon. And uh, with her other, uh, spiritual numerology, transac transactional analysis. She has also designed an NLP programming and subconscious workshop called Shab to Yog. So over to you, Tripti Ji. Thank you, Varsha Ji, as always. Uh, 
listening to your uh, wonderful words for me. I'm deeply moved and always so much in love with you, uh, Varsha ji. You definitely uh, deserve this. Thank you. Thank you, Varsha. And let us welcome our speaker today and listen to how we can all generate wellness in ourselves. I think it's the need of the hour. So, Dr. Manisha, over to you. Thank you so much, Varsha ji, for such a lovely introduction and really, really nice uh, to uh, meet you all. And thank you so much for this opportunity for me to share about homeopathy with all of you. So, um, uh, myself, Dr. Manisha Lakhekar, I'm practicing homeopathy in Hong Kong since last 10 years. Uh, so many of you, I think, know about homeopathy. Some of you, I think, don't know about homeopathy. So uh, I would just like to tell you what exactly it is. Uh, so homeopathy basically is a form of alternate medicine in which we give highly diluted substances ultra diluted substance substances as the remedies just a minute huh? i want to go to next page yes <clears throat> So homeopathy basically is uh, administering highly diluted substances in the form of remedies to people. So homeopathy was uh, discovered by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. So he's a German uh, uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in 1796. So over 200 years, uh, homeopathy is old over 200 years, more than that. So um, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, himself was a medical practitioner. So he was a very, very bright student born in a very poor uh, uh, porcelain painter family. And because he was a very bright student, these uh, teachers of him requested that you please uh, let him study. We will pay all the education fees and all. And that is how Dr. Samuel Hahnemann completed his uh, education because he was from a very poor family. So at that time, 200 years back in Germany or even in the world also, the practices what they used to do, no? so they won't know what exactly is the disease, cause of the disease. So that time, more than treating the uh, illness, they was more into finding out what exactly is the cause of the disease. So they will give different, different kind of theories like why this disease is happening. So someone will say because of the black bile, the diseases are occurring because of, you know. So the treatment for the uh, for curing the diseases was more evil than the disease itself. So at that time, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann was practicing Western medicine. So nine years of that practice and he realized that the treatment is more hazardous to the patients rather than the disease. Say, for example, there is ulcer on the skin. So they will say that, you know, in your body, there is a black blood or black bile. So they will burn the ulcer with the iron rod until the bone can be visible. So that kind of treatment treatments were going on. Purgatives they will use, leeches they will use. So there was no fixed principles on basis of which medicine was being practiced. So being a very sensitive soul, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann just left the practice. He was a very bright student. At that time, he know 14 different languages. So just to earn his bread and butter, he started um, doing that job of translation. And at that time, he came across the Materia Medica in which it was written that the uh, na uh, remedy named China. So China is very uh, good medicine for malaria because it is bitter. So being a very scientific mind, he thought that why uh, uh, this remedy, China is useful in ma uh, malaria. So just to, uh, you know, he was not convinced about this thing that this China medicine is used for malaria because it is bitter in taste. So he started taking this uh, uh, 
medicine china himself and then he realized that china can treat malaria because it can produce malaria so that is how he started uh, doing different experiments with different different remedies and over the period of 6 years of experiment he came up with this uh, medicine system called as homeopathy so what is homeopathy <clears throat> homeo means similar pathos means suffering so say for example um if we are sick if we are ill so to treat it we have different systems of medicine uh, say for example if now it is very cold in hong kong so if it is very cold how to treat that chill that cold so first thing is that you switch on the heater immediately you start feeling better because you are feeling cold so you switch on the heater and immediately it will be like warm so this is like antipathy so whenever you are sick you are using something which is exactly opposite to your disease so for example if you have pain you just apply pain killer so that is opposite right so this is antipathy so with in the chills for example you feel immediately better when you uh, switch on the heater but after some time what will happen you feel more cold when you go out right then what uh, what other thing so this is antipathy but what is homeopathy if you are feeling very cold you just take a shower then you in the beginning you feel little bit uh, like um, a little bit cold but after that you feel very good warm so the secondary reaction by our body is always opposite so homeopathy is applying some similar principle for the treatment so whatever is natural okay in this world follows the natural laws natural rules and regulations so homeopathy is based on fixed cardinal principles so this is called as seven cardinal principles on homeopathy so these are the seven cardinal principles on which homeopathy is based so uh, the first principle is you have to give similar substances uh, as the remedy like a similar substance so this is called as law of similar then the thing, uh, second thing is law of simplex that means you have to give single remedy so you know what homeopathy <clears throat> many many uh, you know of you must have heard that uh, some of them just use some books read some books and practice homeopathy at home also right so basically they are using these uh, books and just read it and give the remedy but that is not that is not homeopathy when you go in homeopathic pharmacies you go to homeopathy pharmacy and ask okay i want medicine for asthma or i want medicine for headache or i want medicine for fever and they will give you some remedy but homeopathy doesn't work on that principle because homeopathy believe in treating the man in disease and not the disease in man so that is why if some homeopath if you tell the name of the disease and if the person is giving you medicine then that means there is something fishy because homeopathy doesn't work like that so <clears throat> first thing is you have to give similar substance uh, as a remedy uh, and and uh, what is allopathy then say for example if we are feeling very cold so we are turning on the heater our problem will be immediately solved because you are using something which is opposite but after some time your body always always gives the opposite secondary reaction okay so in the beginning for example that is why whenever you are trying to take western medicine as a treatment in the beginning you feel good whenever you have certain pain you take painkiller you feel good in the beginning you take something for eczema you feel good because it will suppress in the beginning but the secondary reaction is always hazardous because secondary reaction is always opposite to what you are doing so in the beginning when you are trying to suppress it the secondary reaction always will, will be worse so it will increase the disease so that is why with the western medicine when 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 it, for any kind of disease for that matter in the beginning you feel little bit better but after that there is no permanent solution as such so 70% of the illnesses you uh, listen to anything like blood pressure or hypertension or diabetes or thyroid they will say you have to take medicine life long you know just you have to understand this one thing that until and unless our mind is not sick 
our body cannot fall sick so homeopathy basically focuses on our mind to treat with the disease so in which we we are using this similar substances what is this law of simplex then so in simplex means you cannot say for example if you have 10 different things or say for example five four different things you have headache nausea tummy pain fever now the recent covid symptoms are what are the recent covid symptoms severe headache in hong kong severe headache nausea vomiting fever body pain and uh, acidity and cough cold coriza sore throat so if you take the western medicine what will they give anti inflammatory drug they will give anti pyretic they will give then they give you some antacid so three four types of medicines are there so you are one part of the body one medicine is there other system another medicine is there but in homeopathy we take all the physical symptoms of that particular patient then we take what is the change in the disposition of that patient and then select just one remedy so it doesn't matter you have four things five things you have to consider all the issues of the patient like physical particulars of the patient means for which the prop the problems for which patient has come to us like say for example all the physical level issues like headache bo body pain fever whatever are the symptoms then what are the physical generals that means appetite thirst bowel sleep dream desire aversion of the person and then the mind of that person so what is the predisposition during sickness so do you think the person who is sick all the patients during fever or in this covid situation they doesn't react uh, same so nowadays say for example i'm taking so many cases of kids so some children they just don't uh, care that they are sick so they are just watching television watching mobile they are telling mama that i won't follow this uh, uh, stupid diet of yours i don't want that you please make noodles for me and i just want to eat those noodles so that kind of very playful chubby and they uh, chirpy and they just don't care about the sickness and other child who just want to lie down don't disturb me just uh, don't talk to me don't ask me again and again whether you want to eat or drink so you see totally different disposition so whenever like during the um, covid situation also when i'm taking the cases so much varied presentation is there of the patient so some of them they are very uh, they like to take rest some of them they don't want to take rest some of them they are not at all bothered what is the concern regarding the covid if you ask this question the concern is oh what if i am stuck in the uh, in the uh, home and if i cannot go out then there there is some anxiety about business for some patients there is no business they are like very happy okay very good covid 2 3 days i am at home 4 days uh, boss please don't call me so i am very much happy with it that kind of patients are also there some of them they are really worried like if i am sick what will happen to my children what will happen to my husband if who will take care of them who will cook at home so the anxiety about her business is there so you see the variety of presentation will be there so do you think in covid also you cannot so if you call or ask any homeopath what is the uh, you know like now the common <coughs> common question by uh, many of the patients is like doctor the covid is so much prevalent in hong kong do you have something preventive for uh, covid in hong kong sorry we don't have any preventive because the presentation of each case during the sickness is very different so if we understand the person as a whole so we don't want to just understand the symptom but you know unfortunately what happens when you go to doctor especially when you go to homeopath you think that i have to give the same case how i give to the western doctor so you go and you tell okay i have itchy i have this skin problem doctor i have hair fall issue doctor i have hormonal issue see you are not your hair you are not your uh, hand or you are not your skin you are one person so that is okay you are giving the case on a physical level that is okay but one step higher one step higher you have to understand that this homeopath need to understand you as a whole but so many time patient will hide the information sometimes they don't even know what to tell to the doctor because they don't know the importance of that and sometimes you don't even realize why you fail 
anything at the first place so what we are dealing with it is much much more deeper than what patient is thinking because homeopathy is totally totally different than western medicine so in western medicine there is no fixed principle as what i am trying to tell you in homeopathy we are giving medicine on the similar similarity base so how much i am able to match my remedy to you whole and soul like your mental generals physical generals and physical particulars so my remedy should be a match with your mind also with your physical also and with your physical particular that means disease also so this is homeopathy homeo is similar pathos is suffering what is antipathy in antipathy they give you exactly opposite medicine and what is allopathy in allopathy there is no fixed principle means for example if you are feeling cold what i am saying in homeopathy you just take shower that is homeopathy because you are treating the disease with similar kind of uh, uh, treatment then in antipathy you are giving something which is opposite right opposite to your disease and in allopathy if you are feeling cold just vodka pilo so you know that is that will uh, divert your mind so in allopathy say for example if we have fever why we get fever fever so any signs and symptom produced by our body is to let you know that something is wrong within something is problem inside so fever is to let you know that something is wrong within you say for example if i eat some wrong food or bad food and if i have a gastritis and then there is raise in temperature nausea and vomiting that means my body is trying to tell that there is inflammation in the stomach and then if there there is rise in temperature what we are what we are doing that we take panadol so when you take panadol that means panadol work in the center in the brain which is called as hypothalamus which is a thermoregulatory center so your body is trying to tell you that i am raising your fever because there is something wrong and what you are answering what you are trying to do is just take panadol and let the brain uh, say shut up just keep quiet don't raise the temperature don't tell me that there is some problem so no this is like allopathy that means there is no fixed principle but whatever is natural see all of us are educated so we are, why are even we, we joining this session right we want to know something right so that is what i am trying to <clears throat> tell you that whatever is natural no whenever the creation is by god it will always always follow a rule right so this this creation whenever it is by god it is natural whatever is natural that will follow some some fixed rules regulation and laws so in allopathy for any kind of treatment there is no fixed law whatever is uh, like uh, whatever they want to do they will uh, approach in different different methodology and there is no curative solution so for letting us know like to homeopath how to practice homeopathy dr samuel hanuman has written a book so that is kind of bible on homeopathy that is called as organon of medicine so the first line in the organon of medicine what is written is highest ideal of cure is rapid gentle and permanent restoration of the sick to health as it is termed that means when any patient come to the doctor the, the target of that doctor should be to treat that person rapidly gently and permanently right so when you are really willing to do something genuinely which is like curing someone then you have to follow the rules you have to follow the law but unfortunately even many homeopaths also they won't follow it because it is difficult see for example if one patient come and is having asthma so when i'm asking you 100 times of 100 types of different questions it is difficult for me because for asthma in homeopathy we have more than 700 800 remedies in homeopathy for asthma so just to take you know keep on asking you question take case of like one hour and then find the remedy for asthma it is difficult but what if i just go to the pharmacy and give you some mix cocktail type of solution on which the bottle is written asthma it's very easy for me right so because when you practice mix mix homeopathy so whatever are the top 5 10 remedies no they will have some fixed formula so if you go to homeopathic pharmacy you can buy you tell them any symptom you tell them any disease they will give you something right but 
please remember that is not homeopathy that is as bad as allopathy and actually worse than allopathy so if some people tell you you know people will ask me do you have this formula by this this such and such company so if i say no so they will uh, back question me like how come you don't know this formula you are a homeopath no you don't know this so i'm like okay i don't do this because i don't practice this i don't practice this mixed medicine because that is not homeopathy that is not homeopathy or when homeopathy is not that simple also so just try to understand one by one if any question anything i will answer you your all the queries okay so the first principle is you give the similar remedy to your patient the second principle is you give one remedy at a time okay so even if the patient is telling me 10 different symptoms i will not give you 10 different remedies so there is two types of things one is called as bio combination so that is a supplement so in supplement you mix supplements is fine because one person can lack calcium at the same time phosphorus at the same time silica so you can have deficiencies of different mineral so if you are giving minerals together that is fine but the pure homeopathic remedies you should not mix them so right now whatever is the state so we we uh, we see what is three p's we say it uh, we call it as three p's so what is predominant what is uh, present what is persistent and what is predominant so whenever patient comes to me so it is like like onion so i have to see the, what is the upper layer of that disease you just clear that then you will see the second layer you just clear that you will see the third layer because nowadays no person no patient will come to me as a pure disease it is always a complex disease complex disease is more like that is another uh, this thing so in complex disease what happens uh, okay i will explain that one later so the third one is law of minimum law of minimum is what you give least possible medicine to your patient this is what dr samuel haniman has written but you know nowadays our mindset is such i don't know what people will think that you know if i am paying you so much i'm uh, paying you this much money then you give this much amount of money like kilo se de do liter se pila do they are so happy kitna itna dawai de diya they are so happy that okay i got this much medicine but understand try to understand you know who is the best doctor your own body is the best doctor no one else can treat you better than your own body because you are the best doctor for yourself your body is so beautifully designed by that almighty that he has you know fit all the machineries to treat you as well so if your body knows how to create this disease your body also know how to treat it right so that is why what homeopathy uh, what dr samuel haniman has told us that try to give minimum possible remedies to your patient please let their body learn and understand how to treat itself because it already knows you know so we just want to stimulate those healing energies within you healing energies as are there in you only we don't need to give everything from outside like how the child for example one year old child he already know how to walk right so when he is trying to learn how to walk what we do in the beginning we support the child and we support it very nicely but when that strength is there when the child understand how to put that step they slowly 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 we take out our support right same way in homeopathy in the beginning we give you medicines so that your body you know uh, walk properly and slowly slowly we take away the medicine so what is who is very good homeopath or who is a very good doctor who gives least possible remedies to their patients so we should always administer minimum dose minimum medicine to your patients so that we give more chance to the body to heal itself because how long you are supposed to take the medicine how long, you cannot take medicine for life long so we have to understand let your body understand that it can heal right so that is our third law that give minimum possible remedy then the fourth law is doctrine of drug proving so this drug proving <coughs> you all know that all the pathies like allopathy and all other medicine uh, also like ayurveda and all 
before administering the medicines to our patients, they prove the remedies, right? So in Western medicine, in allopathy, they prove medicine on lower animals like guinea pig or some rat or rabbit, like lower animals. So homeopathy is the only system on the earth in which homeopathy medicine before giving to our patients, we already prove those remedies on healthy human beings. Okay, not on lower animals. So this is the only system on the earth where medicines before giving to you, they are given to healthy human beings. So now you can understand, say, for example, if there is some remedy we are trying to prove for the pain. Okay, so when we give the medicine to a rat or a guinea pig, uh, say, for example, we are giving medicine for gastritis or we are giving medicine for migraine. So they have all the machineries. You give medicine for the migraine. So those will be noted down that, okay, this guinea pig has pain reduced by such and such amount and all. So all is machinery based. But you can imagine if the medicine is proved on a human being, on a healthy human being, this person will not only tell you that, okay, after taking this medicine, my head is hurting a lot or my tummy is aching a lot because all the symptoms will be produced in those healthy human beings. So when you are proving the remedies on human beings, they will not only tell you what is happening within their system, what is happening in their body, but they will also speak their mind. They will tell you like uh, in headache, say for example, we have a remedy named uh, Nux Vomica. Very, very good medicine for migraine. And we have a medicine um, named Bryonia. Again, a very good medicine for migraine. So I tell you a small difference, okay? So both these are the medicines for migraine. So there was one patient who came to me and he was sitting like this and he was like, uh, so I, I was like, okay, so what is the problem? So you know how in homeopathy, we keep on asking the questions to the patient. So headache, uh, I have headache. So I'm like, okay, where exactly the headache? So he's like, Okay, so phone rang. So he just saw like this. Again, phone rang. He just switched off, switched it off and just kept it. And then when I tried to ask some more question and he was like, can you please give me medicine now for headache? So you see the irritability. So angry when obliged to answer, irritability, pain during. And during this, he don't want to be disturbed even by his phone. So even the phone was of his own boss, he just switched it off, right? So this one is Nux Vomica. In Nux Vomica patient, the irritability is so much that doctor is also very scared to ask this question because you know you never know that he may slap you, like that kind of expression because he's so, so, so angry with the pain. And this Bryonia patient, uh, oh, doctor, yeah, doctor, I have headache, I have headache. Okay, so the phone rang. Uh, uh, doctor, just a minute, doctor, just a minute. Huh? Just this, my boss, my boss. And he's uh, taking a phone like this and then keeping the phone. Okay, so, sorry, yeah, doctor, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 you are asking me something. Yes, again, the phone rang. This time, phone is wife. Hey, bola doctor, I'm with the doctor, just keep the phone like that. So you see? Phone is of boss, then receive the phone. So this is a business kind of like anxiety about business. This is bryonia. It's a typical bryonia. So now you see both are migraine remedy, both are business people. But Nux Fomica, they are so perfect. They want rest means absolutely rest, tranquility, desire for. And this, this when you, you are proving the remedies on human being, you will get the personality pictures. You will get the beautiful teeny tiny shades of each and every human being, how they behave during the sickness. So how they are behaving during the sickness becomes so important because when the remedies were proved, they were proved on human beings. They were not proved on animals. So because they were proved on human beings, each and every shade during the illness is beautifully portrayed in the um, books as a picture. So it is like a horoscope, like a kundali. So sometimes patient will come and even if some things they have not mentioned, I'm able to tell them about themselves. So they will sometimes think that, you know, 
you are a homeopath or like a psychologist like what exactly because i have not told you this thing how come you know about me so if i know you are a naxomica i will know that you will not take a nonsense from me because you are naxomica so you will really you know uh, uh, be very furious if i so no nonsense is naxomica but bryonia is you just you know uh, bargaining is bryonia so in the business if the phone is by the boss then it is important because i may lose money but if it is by the wife then it is not that important so that is okay but naxomica doesn't matter whether wife whether boss he will not pick the phone he will not pick the phone so you know all these kind of shades on the personalities you will get to know in homeopathy because the remedies are proved on human beings so that is why during any sickness for that matter i tell you um it is not possible that each and every individual are is behaving the same way so for example if um, someone is having like uh, gastritis okay there was one lady uh, who came to me for gastritis and then i told her you know madam you are having this problem gastritis you please don't eat outside now so she was like oh, i love ebenezer ma'am खाएगा नहीं तो जिएगा कैसे अरे यू हैव गैस्ट्राइटिस आई एम टेलिंग यू यार फॉर टू मंथ्स यू कैन नॉट स्टॉप नो नो मैम प्लीज आई विल आई लव एबीनिजर आई कैन नॉट लिव टी आई कैन नॉट लिव विदाउट टी या या फोर टाइम्स अ टी ओके आई विल मेक थ्री टाइम्स ओके शी इज बार्गेनिंग विथ मी ओके ओके थ्री टाइम्स हां आई विल ड्रिंक थ्री टाइम्स यू जस्ट गिव मी मेडिसिन सो अरे आई वांट टू ट्रीट यू और यू वांट टू गेट बेटर हां सो यू नो दिस वन दिस इज गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट इज शोकिंग so doesn't matter what 400 sugar sir please you have four your sugar is 400 you please keep some patience and uh, this 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 parhez no no doctor you give me medicine i cannot control chai to piyega char time so what is this so you know this and one is sugar is 160 doctor normal is 140 mine is 160 i have stopped this 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 i have read this many this, so so much they will take care and they are telling me so i am thinking okay i am the doctor or you are the doctor so 160 and look at the presentation and adaptation of this person and 400 plus and look at this lady he she want to go to uh, ebenezer and eat with gastritis and that much of sugar so you see huge difference no and then how come you can say that for diabetes you are giving the same remedy to this 160 and same remedy to this 400 uh, lady how come because you see the individual the presentation is so different the disease is same diabetes right so for one i have given the remedy merk sol which was like a very good gourmand remedy and the other one is arsenic album very particular perfectionist very refined perfectionist anxiety about health that much doctor will not have knowledge that much arsenic patient will have knowledge because desire to read for medical books all the google baba so all all the information from the google is by hearted by nux uh, arsenic album and then presenting in front of you like very perfect all the case paper files everything morning ka sugar itna afternoon sugar this much night sugar this much i'm like okay so can you give same remedy to to both the person cannot so you see this is the this is the beauty of individualization that is what we see in homeopathy so that is why in homeopathy we are 400 different types of medicine for uh, diabetes so 400 different type of presentation that means we will get in our clinic so how can you treat the diabetes with the, this remedy so how can you say that okay i have diabetes give me this remedy no what is the presentation of that particular person okay i will not go too much into psychodynamic but there is a really beautiful thing in homeopathy we link each disease with the psychodynamic we say that whenever you know there is lack of sweetness in your life no you will get diabetes <coughs> so zindagi ka mithas jab hi chala jayega na to diabetes hota hai ye sab all everything everything are so monotonous sab kuch kar liya job kar liya with family so, uh, spend so much time ye beti ka shaadi kar liya ye kar, sab kuch kar liya abhi kuch nahi hai karne ke liye diabetes ho gaya so you see this is psychodynamic so that is different you know this thing i will not go into so much detail about it but for each and every disease we link 
the level of all the level of that patient because you know this is very very unfortunate that we just treat our body as a material thing but try to understand i am not my body if i am saying that my glass my glass my water so that means i am not the glass right i am not the, my mouse that means i am not the mouse so same like that when you are saying na my stomach my skin my hair my face that means you are not your face that means this is not you that means this is not you so who are you then you have different kind of doctors you, if if something problem in the heart you go to the cardiologist then cardiologist will say oh you have tummy problem okay but that is not my problem you go to gastroenterologist gastroenterologist you go and then if you have some problems in your eyes they are like okay maybe you can go to ophthalmologist this is not my department stomach is my department your eyes is not my department are baba but whose department is you then ha huh? heart ka alag doctor stomach is medicine different doctor ophthalmologist different ent different then who is doctor for you and who will treat you because until and unless you are sick from within your body will not get symptoms so who will take care of that so you know try to understand this is all very holistic this is very very deep right so these remedies homeopathy are proved on human beings they are not proved on lower animals on local animals so that is why in presentation you will get mind body and spirit of a person not only the physical symptoms right the next uh, uh, law on which it was based was theory of chronic diseases so this samuel haniman took 6 years to put forth the theory of homeopathy to the world but when he was treating the uh, diseases with homeopathy say around uh, 10 15 years he was doing that but then he realized okay whenever i am giving medicine to this particular patient he is getting better but again he is coming back with the same issue say for example if the person is having asthma if i am giving medicine for the acute exacerbation of that asthma that means for the breathlessness that asthma is better breathlessness is better wheezing is better but after 2 3 months what ha ah, that person is again coming back with the asthma so if my homeopathy is so good if i am saying that my medicine is rapid gentle permanent this and that and that then why this is not uh, treating permanently so what is that in a human being which is there behind your chronic diseases what is that in the human system which is not letting your disease cure permanently say for example hay fever every year the person is falling sick in the month of october november december how come you have eczema every winter eczema is worst every summer eczema is okay so how come every year it is recurring so that is that is where dr samuel hanimus spent 28 years of his life to understand why there is recurrence of the disease if homeopathy is so good then why it is not treating to the root right so then he give the theory of uh, uh, miasms <coughs> so like like how uh, in in what uh, this thing we say no brahma vishnu mahesh is there so one is uh, creator manifestator and destroyer right so whatever is created on the earth it will grow it will manifest and one day it will destroy so same way in our body there are three different kinds of uh, miasms so in uh, in ayurveda uh, they they say vat pitt and kaf so for each disease they will say these three are responsible bhai vat pitt and kaf so in some people there is combination of vat pitt for some people it will be like pitt kaf for some people it will be combination of all three for some it will be combination of two same way homeopathy also says that there are three different kind of miasms on basis of which you will get the disease so the first one is sora the second one is psychosis and the third one is called as syphilis so sora all we are born as a sora so you see whenever kid is falling sick what kind of diseases children will get they will get say tonsillitis laryngitis pharyngitis sinusitis cough ho jayega cough cold core as a uh, tummy pain gastritis diarrhea that's all right that kind of disease so sora has to do with itis that means inflammatory kind of diseases 
so child who is uh, so innocent loving caring forget everything right so those children also will get diseases like inflammation psoriatic kind of illnesses but as we grow older uh, we uh, we we learn uh, what are the morals we learn the different ways of living we learn how to behave in society we learn to be mature right we learn to be politically correct right so this is like adulthood so in adulthood it's more like dhoka uh, dhadi it's more like kya bolte usko in adulthood it is more like khane ke daat aur dikhane ke daat means there is no purity in adulthood so it's more like political right chalaki chalaki is there and in adulthood bachcha kaisa hota hai bachcha is very innocent no so for example bachcha hai so if two children are fighting right so if one child fight with another one they fight get lost don't show me your face this that after some time again come back say sorry this that and they are mixing together play happily right but in adulthood the big ego is there you hurt me you come back i will say it's okay but in heart it's not okay it is not okay i will forgive but i won't forget right so that things is there in the heart big ego ka dikhana everything is about show off so this in adulthood we usually have psychotic miasm which is prevalent so in disease state the childhood stage you will get diseases like inflammatory diseases sub it types like gastritis tonsillitis laryngitis pharyngitis this that very easy to treat you give some anti inflammatory it's okay but adulthood you have big ego your diseases also will be like that so in adulthood diseases will be like hypertension diabetes uh, uh, what is that uh, thyroid thyroid so all kind of chronic type of illnesses so more psychotic so more accumulative kind of diseases cholesterol or uh, heart related illnesses all these and then in syphilis it's all about destruction so all the destructive diseases will happen in syphilitic miasm so in each and every one of us all three miasms are there but whichever is predominant in you that kind of disease you will get so you know people will ask and expect me to answer oh doctor i take care of my myself so much i have never drink in my life i have never smoke in my how come i have got cancer but uh, brother you have never spoken nicely with anybody huh? always always i i i have seen this this is one of my patient i'm talking always like bad language never say anything good about anybody i have not ever heard from his mouth you know that kind of mentality is there you are saying you have never drink you have never smoke how come i got cancer so you know i'm just giving you example so it is very uh, it is impossible for me to answer you all these things in just 5 minutes like how come you got cancer because you have never eaten anything tobacco nahi khaya never uh, had you know uh, alcohol tobacco gutka how come i got cancer so the answer is not that simple my friend answer is not that simple it is the underlying miasm which is playing a role what kind of thought process is there what kind of you know so hum we always say na you should always be like a bachcha if you really want to be healthy in your life if you really want to really lead a happy healthy life you no know, just try to forgive and forget whenever that big ego will come na that will that will destroy that will destroy you because you are this is these are all defense mechanism so whenever you are in the soric state of mind your diseases will be on the inflammatory level whenever you are on the psychotic state of mind your diseases will be in the chronic state, chronic condition like all kind of accumulations cholesterol heart related illnesses uh, thyroid permanent problems like pcods and all these all are um, uh, Uh, the psychotic illnesses and the third one is destructive so when your mind is very destructive then the diseases also will be like for for example ulcers different kind of chancres syphilis cancers destructive illnesses permanently damage in your system because body is not able to uh, save that part so body will destroy i will i will uh, give you one example in a simple language <coughs> so that you understand say for example um 
if i'm stuck in a in a hut in a jungle okay uh, and there are no uh, people there and then i'm alone and stuck in that hut and there are some uh, thief with hatyar kya bolte hain hatyar ko with some weapons <laughs> weapons <laughs> thank you so with some weapons attacking on that hut huh? i'm alone so what a normal human being will do okay call police please help me please help me these are the people thief attacking my hut trying to destroy me damage me same way same way your body whenever it is in a healthy state whenever some kind of disease inflammation is trying to attack your system your systems your body's first defense in uh, defense in a healthier way will be inflammation so inflammation is rubber tumor keller dollar functionalesa that means body will try to inflame that part and after 2 3 days it will go away so this is healthy state because your mind is so weak right so if my mind is so weak i will call police try to get help oh my god police is not picking my phone and these people are attacking me now what to do i have to save myself come on so i will try to you know uh, accumulate all the heavy heavy stuff like sofa this towards the door and i will just try to block that particular thing so that it doesn't attack me right so same way when your defense mechanism sora is no more working your body will switch to the psychotic mode and then your body will just try to overgrow that particular part so all type of different types of tumors growth cyst fibroids um uh, uh, like hardening hey, of the particular thing the pehle khadi hai na do हाँ नहीं बुक ही नहीं नमकीन खा दिए ना इतना इतेश कैन यू प्लीज कैन यू प्लीज म्यूट योर माइक्स इतेश कैन यू प्लीज म्यूट योर माइक थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके सो व्हेन योर बॉडी गोज इनटू साइकोटिक जोन नो योर बॉडी डोंट सी अब अब वी आर डिजाइन्ड टू प्रोटेक्ट आवर सेल्फ वी आर डिजाइन्ड बाय गॉड अलमाइट to live as long as we can okay so body will go step by step body will not give you very strange and uh, scary kind of this is like first uh, first time only okay it will just go step by step so when your mindset is in psychotic miasm you will try to accumulate so all kind of overgrowth hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism a uh, high blood pressure high cholesterol bp diabetes these are all psychotic illnesses because most of us are in psychotic miasm nowadays so then third thing even if i am trying to accumulate so many things they are still you know uh, breaking through and came inside so now though i am not a murderer i will try to take some knife or something and try to defend no so same way when your psychotic miasm is not able to protect your body your body will just start destroying that particular part so i just will destroy that part so that my whole body can be saved so these are the cancers and all destructive kind of syphilitic illnesses so that is how our body goes step by step and to to study this dr samuel hanneman has spent 28 years of his life to understand like how human body works and how the diseases comes how we have to prevent it how we have to protect it so whenever the person come person patient will just keep on saying their illnesses or diseases but in my mind all these things goes from where the diseases emerge what is the conceit disease cannot happen without any particular cause so whatever symptoms whatever disease we are suffering from is the reaction to something when there will be reaction to something when concern adaptation reaction so reaction the result of reaction is disease so when you will give give react when you are trying to adapt with some situation in our life in your life when you are trying to adapt with that situation when you are really concerned about that situation right so concerns are different for all other different people different different concerns are there so these concerns mostly are in five different areas so the first most most important is domestic so most of the people most of us fall sick because of our own family 
it can be husband it can be because of tension stress worry anxiety or any bad relationship in domestic affairs the second one is a financial affair third one is your career fourth one is society fifth one is spiritual and all this god related spiritual whatever that so those are less so most important is relationship so relationship the domestic relationship so ipr ipr is interpersonal relationship interpersonal relationship how is that relationship in the home at domestic level that makes us fall sick most of the time because that is a concern every day because of that concern you are thinking every day you are adapting to the situation then there is reaction then there is origin of the disease but what we are focusing only this we never go to the root cause because we don't know there is a root cause right so this all this study was done by dr samuel hanimat for 28 years and then it is given in homeopathy and on basis of that we prescribe our prescriptions are based on that so they are not very superficial that this is name remedy this is name remedy it's not like that okay so what is the next principle <clears throat> okay so theory of vital force so um patient usually i will give them medicine in and i tell them okay you put two three pills four five pills in some water and you drink one sip so they will say uh, you are telling us to drink one sip and throw away rest of the water that water will be wasted no medicine is wasted so it's not wasted even if you eat like one kg of medicine or even if you eat one pill of the remedy in homeopathy it is same okay it doesn't matter all what matters is the power the potency of that particular medicine so then they will say doctor but you know we have drink this medicine but uh, after that we can eat something so we tell them okay don't eat or drink anything 10 minutes why in western medicine you will see that there are different shape of the tablets there are different sizes of the tablets and then uh, the, you have to drink the uh, you have to eat the medicine then you have to eat food something like that because uh, depending on the size depending on the shape depending on the substance from which the tablet is prepared western medicine so it will be dissolved either in the mouth or maybe in the stomach esophagus pan, uh, like this in the intestine so in homeopathy medicine doesn't work that way because medicine will not go into your stomach and work medicine basically stimulate the mucus membrane in the mouth and works directly on the central nervous system so where does exactly medicine work does it go into your any of your organ and work there no it work on your healing power so what is that healing power that is your vital force what is vital force what is the difference between a a body like a human being and a dead body the only difference is dead body also have all the organs this material body is there but that animating force which actually is running your system running your body hum bolte na atma pran that pran is vital force okay so homeopathic medicines basically work on your pran that is your vital force so this is the sixth principle of homeopathy and the seven one is drug dynamization so in homeopathy we are diluting the substance so different different uh, potencies we prepare by diluting the different substances and that is called as drug dynamization so what is that so many people now have confusion that oh homeopathy i think is same like ayurveda because both are herbal but this is a very big myth ayurveda is totally different homeopathy is totally different in ayurveda they are using crude form of medicine like crude substance jaise hum aad kada banate kokshan <coughs> kokshan uh, that kind of concoctions uh, are prepared in ayurveda right so they use some part of plant and all to prepare the medicine but in homeopathy we are actually diluting that substance many fold times so much it is diluted that it crosses the avogadro's number so there is no actual substance of that particular medicine is present in homeopathy so what is the biggest difference between ayurveda and homeopathy is way of preparation so in homeopathy the actual substance is there so that crude form of substance either in the um, like solid form or liquid form or in the powders you can see 
that is ayurveda but in homeopathy you dilute the substance so what are the sources from which homeopathic remedies are prepared so most of the homeopathic remedies are prepared from plants okay then number 2 is mineral mineral all mineral kingdom uh, medicines are there in homeopathy then the third one is animal then there is nozod sarcod and imponderabilia so these are the sources of homeopathic remedies and that is how we prepare the remedy the most you know basic in uh, homeopathy is individualization individualization means medicines are not based on the name of the disease but medicines are based on person who is having the disease so we are treating in each and every case doesn't matter whether it is acute case doesn't matter whether it is chronic case the disease uh, the the remedies are always depend on the person who is sick so it is not <clears throat> we treat man in disease and not the disease in man so that is very basic uh, principle to be followed there are so many uh, illnesses right from uh, simple cold cough coryza uh, to aids and cancers doesn't matter what is the name of the disease we can treat it with homeopathy so sometimes na people for inquiry they will call me doctor my uh, friend got diagnosed with uh, stroke so do you have something in homeopathy okay so the answer is very difficult because the answer can be yes can be no if i understand that person who is having stroke then the answer is yes if i don't understand that person then the answer is no because for me treating the cold cough coryza and treating the cancer is the same thing because in both cases i have to understand man behind and not the disease because remedies are not based on the name of that particular disease so that is uh, that is the uh, reason okay <clears throat> so these are some there are so many cases which i can show uh, we have but uh, because skin diseases you can see you can see very fast it works this was a case come come to me in 2016 uh, this girl maybe around 5 year old she was having this eczema since birth okay so within 2 months of homeopathic medication she got better and she is now in not in hong kong uh, she is around 10 year old and till today means 5 years uh, after also she didn't get any recurrence of this eczema so this was again another case of uh, eczema these ppts are old i have now very new good cases advanced cases this again was a case of eczema very severe case this case is very uh, by severe because this lady was suffering from eczema since 25 years and this got cleared in 6 months of homeopathy so um, these are only on the skin but this was a case of cancer came to me very interesting case because this lady couldn't even speak one word of english and it was such a challenge to take case from her and her relatives it was very you know but uh, very beautifully she responded to homeopathy and even the case of cancer also you can treat because what you have to treat and what you have to focus is man in disease and not the disease in man so that is why sometimes simple cold cough coryza also will not get better and sometimes some such gross pathology also can be treated with homeopathy okay so uh thank you very much i think i have covered most of the part um now if any question any queries you can go ahead i love to talk <laughs> so friends if anyone has questions please shoot anybody it was really a fantastic session so much uh, good information about homeopathy all i need is her number <laughs> <laughs> yes sure sure rao do you have any question yeah. uh, dr lakikar i i i wanted to know uh, you know specifically in this case of cancer is the uh, patient now uh, perfectly fine i mean is or is, uh, did he, did the person have to go through the operation and all hmm. so this case uh, when i saw her this lady i think for 5 years back uh she was already on stage 4 and at that time they refused uh, they were uh, they were saying that they wanted to give her target therapy but uh, no use because she was not responding at all 
and her cancer was everywhere even like lungs and all it got spread very badly so they just kept her outside in that area where everybody can just go and visit the patient and that's how i went there and i just took the case so within 2 to 3 days of our homeopathic medication her lungs were clear so then the doctor said okay we can give target therapy now so because they could see that okay there is some hope before it was so bad she was not even able to breathe so after two to three days of our medication, they started target therapy. 17 days she was in hospital and they have given her target therapy there only. Then they uh, sent her home. After that okay. also target therapy was given, but no radiation was given to this patient. They have kept chemo in option. So they said that we will give chemo, but uh, for chemo also they have given her chemo, but very minimal dose, just the some oral chemo was given to this patient. And she didn't even lose her hair and everything. And she really responded very well. Four years after that, she was very well. Means uh, uh, her so one of her relative actually came one, one, one year back. So that's how I know. So right now, what is the situation? I don't know. But one year till one year back, she was doing very good. Yeah. Also, another question I had uh, was related with, uh, uh, I mean, you had mentioned uh, about, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> the body's own mechanisms, you know, uh, to be kept alive. And uh, you said that, you know, like uh, all the other treatments, you know, they try to try kind of take, take away that, the fighting mechanisms. So, uh, I mean, what would you say about uh, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the vaccinations that uh, one needs to take? Would that also, I mean, also be a part of the same thing? I mean, does it uh, make the body weaker? Hmm. So, um, here again, yes, I would say yes, because you see in COVID vaccine, so how we prepare vaccine, basically we study the virus, then we take that particular virus, put it in some animal's body, mostly horses they use. So they put this antigen uh, into the body of horse or animal, then that animal is preparing antibodies then you collect those antibodies and then you are putting these ready-made antibodies in human body. Mm -hmm. This is vaccine, right? This is mm -hmm. vaccine. So now, if you see the cases in Hong Kong right now for Corona, mm -hmm. so many patients have already taken two, at least two doses of vaccine and third booster dose also. Still, they are like positive. N number of cases I can show you. Okay. So, so exactly. what, is, what is the point here? The vaccine, which was prepared maybe six months back or one year back, that time the virus, the shape, size, everything was different. So the antigens, what was prepared, uh, sorry, antibodies, what was prepared was for that particular virus. But virus changed in one year. It changed during mutation process. Mm -hmm. So now that same vaccine is no more prevalent, no more useful. So the, the idea is, how many that is the you know uh, that is very bad thing that for in in corona also why we were not scared like why homeopaths were not scared because we are not dealing with the virus we are dealing with the symptoms so even if it is because of any bacteria even if because of uh, any virus even if it is because of omicron or covid doesn't matter because how is it going to make difference when you are treating the person homeopathically because you are treating the symptoms and signs of the disease but when you are treating with western medicine then there is a limitation what is the limitation in vaccine here now the virus the vaccine which you have prepared one year back is no more uh, useful now because that virus has changed through mutation so how god is uh, the generator of that virus who is letting the virus see everybody is you know what uh, survival of the fittest is the rule, right? So everybody will try to survive. So virus also will try to survive. Then why we human beings are not mutating ourselves? Why we are not trying to, you know, uh, develop that antibodies uh, by ourselves? Because we are scared of disease. Uh, so doctor, uh, I mean, uh, the homeopathy uh, in homeopathy, it's, it's uh, you know, you're, we're trying to uh, boost the body immunity more than treating the disease. Correct, that, correct, 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 exactly, okay. exactly. So basically the remedies are to improve your own immunity. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yes.
So, and Dr. Dr. Manicha, are you saying that our mindset makes all the difference? Mindset is a major, major, uh, major thing, like 70%. Okay, so 70% is our mind and 30% is all other things. But, you know, unfortunately, we give importance to 30% of the, so what comes in 30%? See, if your mind is very good, 70% very good. But if uh, I'm just eating, uh, sitting at one place, no exercise, no movement, nothing, I will fall sick, right? Because that will be like lifestyle disease. So that, that, that will happen. Then if I'm just sitting at one place and keeping, uh, keeping, keep on eating all bad, bad stuff and all. So that is also bad. So all these things comes 30% only. So first we have to focus on our mind that if you are not scared, if you are very happy, if you are, you know, uh, uh, letting things go, not so much worried about things very badly, so you will not fall sick very often. 30% is all diet, exercise, all these things. But unfortunately, we focus more on that. And I have seen if, if you know, something like this is true, then you tell me so many, so many say for example cricketers uh, they take care of themselves so well this siddharth siddharth shukla's case he was uh, going to gym so much such a nice and wonderful body then why heart attack at age of 40 you understand what i mean so we unfortunately are focusing on that 30 percent i'm not saying that is not important i'm not saying that you just keep on uh, eating junk and you will be all right because your mind is very good no that is overconfidence those are also important but mind is more important so doctor are you saying that people who complain a lot who hold a lot of grudges who hold a lot of resentments who blame others and you know they are constantly complaining and whining and you know, are fearful, they get sick more often. Are you saying that? Yes, 100%. So I tell you, and scientifically also, this is true. How? In our body, brain secretes neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is protein in nature. Protein, which is having amino acid chain. For one emotion, you have one neurotransmitter in your brain, which is protein in nature. So when your emotion get disturbed, this protein get released from the bone, which is a neurotransmitter which is protein in nature, which imbalances your homeostasis. When the homeostasis is imbalanced, your immunity goes down. When your immunity goes down, you fall sick. So emotion and body, it's together. It's not two different things. And it is scientifically connected. Before they, will not, they were not ready to accept this, but nowadays so many researches are going on where they are relating the heart attacks with the emotions. You understand? So, so many times um, in chronic illnesses, we ask what went wrong in your life? 25. I have one case. The case is of uh, asthma. This lady <coughs> was suffering from asthma since 28 years. So she started having asthma at age of 16. So I asked her that, do you have uh, this history of asthma in your family? Like dada, dadi, nana, nani, like grandparents, anybody has? So she said, no, no one had it. So I said, how come, what happened when you were 16 year old? She told, I had a brother, a doctor. He was 18 year old. My brother was 18 year old. He, he died in accident at age of 18. So she was, patient was 16 at that time. Since that time, she started having asthma. So ailments from death of loved ones. This is a, this was the main rubric which I have taken in this case. So you see this patient, that brother was the only one to whom this patient was so attached, so attached. She used to share all her emotions. She, she didn't even have best friends, no friends, nothing. So you see, there, there should be someone in your life a well-wisher, a friend, a partner, a husband, wife, with whom you should be able to share each and every emotion of yours. So if that is gone, so much of suppression since 28 years. So that grief was never healed. That trauma was never healed. So her asthma was never healed. So that patient is completely all right with homeopathy.
So this is what elements from death of loved ones in the family. So different, different elements you can take because your emotions got disturbed so much, but people will not realize that. They will say, oh, that was like 20 years back. No, doctor, how come that is affecting me now? That is okay. That is not affecting you now. But the trauma which happened at that time, that has not healed till now. That is why your disease is not healed till today also. Understand? So you are, you are uh, absolutely right. People who are lamenting, keep on complaining about everything, about life, not happy, you know, not forgiving, not forgetting, keep grudges, keep on, uh, you know, saying bad things. Uh, they will fall more, they will fall sick more often and complicated cases. They yeah. will, even with homeopathy, they take time. <laughs> that's right. Because that's what I see in my, in my yes. you know practice that you know people who hold on to a lot of grudges they fall yes. sick more often than you know people who don't care i mean not yes. care but those who are carefree and they let go easily they forget easily and they are like you know okay happy go lucky kind of people they are much happier and much healthier yeah you know i understand that uh, seeing your child sick is very difficult for any mother for that matter so i have many cases of eczema so i see Kids who are like five years, six years, and if they are having eczema, they are not much bothered about the disease, but their parents are. So I have seen in this practice, in my practice, that mothers who are really, you know, not so much worried about the illness, they are like, okay, I'm going to Dr. Manisha. Okay, she's giving medicine. Okay, she has already told okay, that disease will get aggravated a little bit. So mothers are a little bit relaxed. Huh? Those children get better faster than those mothers who will keep on calling me. Oh, how come this got uh, aggravated now? Oh, today she was itching so much. Today she has each 12 minutes doctor. So, you know, that anxiety, you're creating that kind of environment which will delay the healing of your own child. You understand? And the, if, if all of you know, you can read GNM, German New Medicine. So beautifully it is written that, you know, we think that we are, we are worried about our children because we love them. That is a bullshit statement. That's not true. Love is not anxiety. What you are doing is anxiety. You are anxious about your child. You are impatient about your child. It's not love. You see, it's a big difference and beautiful difference. It, this is anxiety. This is not love. So uh, they will ask me, no, but how come doctor, now you will not be worried about your child if your child, I said, see, because I love my child, I care. That's why I'm anxious. It's two different things. You love for your child, now, then you will give all the positive vibes to your child. You will not give such a negativity to your kid. So this, this problem is not with the kid. This problem is yourself because you cannot deal with your anxiety. You know, people will say, when I ask the question, what is stress in your life? They will say, oh, doctor, who doesn't have stress? Everybody has stress. I say there is no nothing called as stress in this life. This is, this is what I really believe. When you are not able to deal with the situation, you feel it is stressful, right? If someone abuse me, gali de diya, sab, some, say something, huh? I don't care, I'm shameless. So will I fall sick because of that? No. Because I have not taken your shit. So I will not fall sick. Oh, this person, you know, has say this, 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 this to me. That is why I'm sick. There was one lady constantly complaining about her mother-in-law. Constant, constant complaint. Patient was thyroid. Thyroid ka patient tha. So this patient say, uh, doctor, I'm suffering from thyroid doctor. I say, what is your problem? What is the pain in your, my mother-in-law? You won't believe such a nasty lady, doctor. I tell you, very bad lady. I say, what do you do when you have this problem? I go to Kavlun Park. I sit there. I just keep relaxed. And this, this lady keep on nagging, you know, doctor such a bad mouth she has so i said okay so after three months of medication then i asked her oh your reports are very good because after three and a half months we have done the investigation so reports were very good so i said wow your uh, reports of tsh is, has gone down so much drastically huh it is very good so she said yeah my stress is also less now my mother-in-law nowadays she doesn't talk so much she she has really improved a lot how come i have given medicine to you how come your mother-in-law improved? You see, so this is all delusional because what we, if this is the biggest mistake, what we feel that because my husband is saying this thing to me, 
because my mother in law is not good because my colleagues are you know planning so many conspiracies against me i am suffering no that is not true you are suffering because you are taking it in that way so when you give the correct medication they will start saying that you know ye baki ke log sudhar gaye but that is not true our diseases our illnesses this is the result of our understanding and our uh, responses to the surrounding if you don't take it if you don't take the shit nothing will happen this is what i have seen with uh, the patient with the practice there was one lady she was suffering from arthritis i tell you this case arthritis she had right husband was sitting next to her so i said since when you have this arthritis she says a uh, doctor like one and half year now i said how come one and half year what happened one and half year back so then uh, her husband told that you know doctor i had a job before so i just left the job now i am trying to do some business so this lady said uh, yes doctor but he had very good uh, job and very handsome salary and there was a fixed salary now i am very worried because my kids go to international school if his business doesn't work that way then what will we do like the like the level of uh, living standard will go down no so she has anxiety about money matter anxiety about his business and all that is why she was having all these arthritic pains so after one month of medication uh, i said but one and half year uh, how is the business she was like zero doctor no business at all so he was like no doctor it is okay like thoda to time lagta hai na it will take little bit time so i was like okay okay after one month i asked how is your pain how much better she is like 80% better my pains are and you know now his business is also running doctor i said wow very good in one month one and half year it was not, nothing was happening up huh? one month and his business is running i am like wow tata birla ban gaya ye to dawai se and medicine was given to wife and not to the husband also so you see the perception you know you, you, you it's all here it's all here so unfortunately we don't understand we always it's it's a human nature we always want to blame someone else all the time but we never go inside we never do introspection we never meditate we never self analyze this is the biggest problem you know 99% of the time the answer is within us but we try to search it outside right absolutely very nice very very nice manisha very nice la what a beautiful talk you've given us really and thank you so the, much to ji the way you speak you know filled with no so much of uh, you are so involved when you're speaking <laughs> you know it actually makes me feel as if like you have eaten drunk everything <laughs> tera jo kaam hai na tere bhitar hai तेरी वॉइस में आंखों में फेस में लाइक यू आर एक्चुअली लाइक यू नो इट्स सो ब्यूटीफुल टू लिसन टू यू रियली शी इज स्पीकिंग टू कन्विक्शन या अलगेट कन्विक्शन या व्हिच इज सो नाइस अच्छा देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन यस मनीषा किसी ने क्वेश्चन पूछा है आई थिंक मंदिरा डॉक्टर हाउ इफेक्टिव आर ट्रीटमेंट्स फॉर सेम हेल्थ इशू बीइंग कैरीड फॉरवर्ड इन द फैमिली when food habits and thought forms become secondary to keh rahe ke genetically agar koi illness family mein hai to phir uh, how effective is the treatment bahut acha sawal hai so uh, you know there is something called as constitution so hum log bolte hai the constitution of yours is the strongest if if your conceiving conceiving was a planned pregnancy your grandparents died with old age that means not with any disease your conception was a planned pregnancy parents have very healthy relationship with each other with each other with together your uh, throughout the pregnancy it was uneventful and after the childbirth was very healthy environment so this is constitution this is constitution so what we are trying to say is unfortunately unfortunately 35% of what we are is our constitutional which is not in our hand 
if there was some problem in grandparents right that will come genetically so myasms even if you are very happy healthy bubbly jolly this that you are uh, in sora but inherently you have got the syphilitic myasm very nasty kind of grandparents or you know so that will come like inherited so that will be 35% but the thing is the beauty is you can reverse it with homeopathy here you cannot reverse it with with mindset and all so 35% is what you genetically got 35% is how you are like how you are raised and then it all depends on how, what kind of friends you have what kind of surrounding you have what kind of domestic ipr you have interpersonal relationship and all so what i was talking on the fifth uh, uh, like uh, fifth law was theory of chronic diseases right so this is where the answer is theory of chronic diseases says where uh the problem if it is genetic that means parents now everything is happy and healthy but there was some problem genetically for example some people will have genetic asthma so you have to treat the person from now so as i told you before we have to uh, uh treat the person like onion right so the first layer you are treating so right now what is present persistent predominant you are clearing that with the remedy then you go into childhood then you have to clear there and then you go back with the parents and then with the grandparent and you can reverse it so in homeopathy you can actually reverse the genetic problems also for example That's example if the child is having juvenile diabetes mm. so child is born with it, it's born with diabetes so where where is the mindset what this child has done nothing right so what was the state so i have cases of juvenile diabetes i have one patient right now going on um uh, sugar level was 27 is the highest what you can see in that app whatever is there in on the shoulder so it was always beyond 27 that means the sugar level was always 400 plus for this kid now with my medicine and kid is only 3 year old and with my medicine now his sugar level is around uh, 8 to 12 sometimes 15 and uh, treatment what we are giving is since like 10 months now 10 months around one year maybe so in one year from 27 it has dropped down to 8 10 like that so what case was taken i have not taken any case of the child i have taken the case what was the stress to the mother during pregnancy you understand and what was the mind state and that negative energy will get imbibed in your child and that is how the genetically it will uh, progress proceed so in homeopathy you can go and prescribe on that level i hope i have answered wow. the question very very interesting yes yeah. ma'am thank you so much it was interesting i can only say that we really have learned a lot today uh we've always heard about you know homeopathy medicine and all that i also want to ask manisha that they say that homeopathy takes a long time like hmm. when you take the medicine to time lagega like the child hmm. it'll take take some time so can you explain why this like it takes lot of time is it because of what reason again again a very very good question so homeopathy takes time is the biggest myth hmm. it's a biggest myth because uh, sometimes i give patient medicine and they are having problems since like 10 years 20 years 15 years and i tell them take the medicine sit outside 10 minutes you come back tell me they are like hello excuse me <laughs> oh yes 10 minutes sit outside come back in 10 minutes in 10 minutes they start feeling better i have n number of video my cases are recorded so i'm not even means i can show you how how fast it can work like a magic because you are really dealing with subconscious mind right so within 10 minutes your problem will not solve but within 10 minutes remedy register in your body say for example if there is a plant like a small plant and you tell me to take it away right so it will be very easy for me because plant has not that root, roots are not very deep seated 
So same is in the disease. But unfortunately, what happens now in homeopathy, cases which comes to us, they are coming to us after going everywhere else. And then last hope is that let's do this, that's it, 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 if directly gone to a homeopath, if you find the correct remedy, it works so fast, so beautifully. I have so many cases. I have one case of uh, mitra, uh, mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis ka case tha, uh, around 40 year old. A uh, 12 saal ka bachcha tha, uh, is admi ko. Aur usko bola tha ki surgery karna padega. He has come to me and this case is video recorded. Huh? I have a record of this case. So this patient came to me who was told five cardiologists suggested to do surgery because it was 69% block in the uh, mitral valve in heart. And I have taken this case, I think on uh, 25th, 25th, 2017, something like that. And then 4th of uh, January, I told him to do MRI again. So he was like, doctor, 7,000, 8,000, MRI, slow kaam karta, itna jaldi nahi hoega. So I'm saying, your face, look, totally you have changed. So I'm very sure that my medicine has worked. You just go and take MRI. 4th of January ka MRI hai. Ye report bhi hai mere paas. 100% clear. If mitral wall stenosis can get clear in 7 days, what fast treatment you want? Homeopathy is the fastest science on the earth and I can challenge you this. It is not that slow, but because unfortunately cases, what comes to us, they are already taking so much allopathic medicine. See, one thing I told you, which I have told you, that I will miss this, because I can say a lot of things, I can say a lot of things. So, there are, uh, <coughs> there is one uh, principle in homeopathy, a weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished by the stronger one if the former one is very similar to later in its manifestation. Matlab kya hai? Ki do similar diseases ek insan mein, ek body mein reh nahi sakte. Two similar diseases cannot stay in human body. So if, jaysay for example, ek area hai aur do gunde hai, agar dono murderer hai, to wo area mein bolega, jo weaker hai andar, wo bolega, tu weaker hai, मैं स्ट्रांगर हूं मैं भी मर्डर करता हूं तुझे मारूंगा पहले मैं फिर मैं वो एरिया का डॉन बनूंगा वैसे ही जब एक डिसीज होती है आपको और सिमिलर टाइप का डिसीज जब भी आने की कोशिश करता है आपकी बॉडी में तो वो जो वीक वाला होता है ना उसको बोलता है भाई तेरे को मारूंगा मैं पहले तू नहीं रह सकता है बॉडी तो हमेशा वीकर को परमानेंटली क्योर करता है स्ट्रांग डिसीज ये नेचुरल है ठीक है तो ये स्ट्रांग आपके बैठेगा आपके बॉडी में एक ही डिसीज है वीकर जो है वो चला गया अगर वो दोनों डिसीजेस अगर ये पहला वाला जो अंदर बैठा हुआ है अगर वो स्ट्रांग है और जो बाहर से आ रहा है वो वीक है तो वो आने ही नहीं देगा फॉर एग्जांपल अगर किसी को मेंटल डिसऑर्डर है किसी को बहुत कॉम्प्लिकेटेड डिसीजेस है और छुट्टू पुट्टू फ्लू ये वो कोविड ये वो सब आ रहे हैं ना आपके बॉडी में आएंगे ही नहीं वो डिसीज क्योंकि बॉडी में ऑलरेडी इतना सारा है मजमा भरा हुआ तो वो आने ही नहीं देगा है उसको तो वो जो अंदर वाला है जो कि स्ट्रांग है वो बोलेगा कि भाई इधर बैठा हूं मैं डॉन भाग यहां से तो वो नहीं आने देगा उसको है ना तो अगर फिर अगर दो डिसिमिलर डिसीजेस है दो दोनों अलग अलग है तो वो एक जो है वो मनी एक्सटॉर्शन करता है और दूसरा है मर्डर करता है तो बोलेगा अच्छा चल तू मनी एक्सटॉर्ट कर मैं मर्डर करता हूं अच्छा तू डायबिटीज है मैं हाइपर टेंशन हूं चल मैं हार्ट में जाता हूं तू डायबिटीज पैंक्रियाज ले ले चल इसमें खेलेंगे ये आदमी में तो हर सौ जगह पे सौ बीमारियां है आपको क्यों है क्योंकि आपका बॉडी कॉम्प्लेक्स डिसीज बनाता है और कॉम्प्लेक्स डिसीज इज ऑलवेज फॉर्म विथ एलोपैथी एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टू ट्रीट और यही सारे लोग जो है हमारे मथे पड़ जाते हैं सब जगह का पानी घाट घाट का पीकर फिर आ जाते हैं कॉम्प्लेक्स डिसीज चल ले चार गोली दे दे होम्योपैथी की मीठी मीठी और ठीक कर अभी हमको कहा जाए भाई हम लोग माफ करो <laughs> Manisha, you are fantastic.
तो यू अंडरस्टैंड तो इतना कॉम्प्लेक्स सब 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 जगह जगह का जगह जगह का पानी पिया हुआ है फिर आएंगे होम्योपैथी फिर बोलेंगे अभी ये दे दो हमने सब कचरा करके रखा है हमारे बॉडी में जगह जगह पे सारे ये सब गुंडे लोग बैठा के रखे हैं अभी तुम निकालो इसको बाहर भाई कैसे करे <laughs> इसीलिए स्लो है क्योंकि तुमने इतना कचरा करके रखा हुआ है अभी हमको बैठ के उसको सब साफ करने का है सो so, ये स्लो नहीं है अगर जो लोग हम हमेशा बचपन से होम्योपैथी लेते हैं जिनका बॉडी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड नहीं है मैंने मेरे लाइफ में कभी एलोपैथी दवाई नहीं खाई है नॉट दैट आई वॉज वेरी बिग फैन ऑफ होम्योपैथी मेरा कुछ नहीं मेरे को अच्छी भी नहीं लगती थी होम्योपैथी मेरे पप्पा बहुत बड़े फैन थे होम्योपैथी के और हम लोगों को अच्छा नहीं लगता था लेकिन हमको कभी एलोपैथी दवाई खिलाई नहीं है आज तक तो हमको तो एक डोज ले लो होम्योपैथी का कि कितना भी बड़ा डिसीज हो जाएगा तो मेरा तो भाग जाता है क्योंकि बॉडी प्योर है बॉडी में कभी एलोपैथी गया ही नहीं है आप समझ रहे हो कितना कितना मतलब कितना कोरी पार्टी होगी ना उतना आसान है उस पर आप लिखो और इरेज करो आसान है पूरा खिचड़ पिचड़ खिचड़ पिचड़ करके आए अभी आओ होम्योपैथी का इरेजर लगाओ और खोलो इसको फिर बोलेंगे ये तो स्लो है भाई तूने ये बनाने के लिए 25 साल लगाए है भाई 25 महीने तो दे दे वो भी मुझे नहीं देना है मेरी दवाई को नहीं देना है खुद की बॉडी को देना है तो कहाँ से स्लो हुआ जब 25 साल से तुम्हारा सोरिया ठीक नहीं हो रहा था और अगर मेरी ट्रीटमेंट से वो तीन साल में चला गया तो 25 साल जो स्टीरॉइड ले रहे थे वो फास्ट था लेकिन तीन साल तुमको लगे है ठीक होने के लिए तो होम्योपैथी भाई वो बहुत लंबा समय लेता है भाई कहाँ से तुम्हारा मैथमेटिक्स का क्या प्रॉब्लम है ये तो मुझे समझ ही नहीं आती तीन साल में परमानेंटली ठीक हुआ है तो भी स्लो है पच्चीस साल से क्या अपना वो कर रहे थे वो वो सही है तो कंपेरिजन कुछ है ही नहीं और जो प्योर केसेस होते हैं वो सबसे फास्ट काम करते हैं होम्योपैथी में बहुत सर्जिकल केसेस वगैरह भी सात सात दिन में ठीक हो जाते हैं और बहुत फास्ट पेन रिलीफ कितना फास्ट भी स्टीरॉइड भी हो या फिर पेन किलर भी हो वो भी इतना फास्ट काम नहीं करता है जितना होम्योपैथी करता है अगर सही दवाई देते हो तो सो इट इज वेरी वेरी फास्ट लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली कॉम्प्लेक्स डिसीजेस से ज्यादा डील करना पड़ता है इसीलिए वो समय लेता है क्योंकि आपने बॉडी में इतने कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी लाई है डाली है पहले इसीलिए ऑपरेशंस रेकमेंडेड इन ऑपरेशन जो है वो टोटली डिफरेंट फील्ड है जो सर्जिकल डिसीजेस है वो होम्योपैथी से ठीक नहीं हो सकते हैं हर पैथी का अपना लिमिटेशन uh, और स्कोप होते हैं तो हमें हमारे लिमिटेशंस भी पता होने चाहिए तो जो सर्जिकल इलनेसेस है वो होम्योपैथी से ठीक नहीं हो सकते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल हर्निया है किसी को इतना बड़ा इंटेस्टाइन है वो बाहर आ चुका तो आप बोलोगे कि होम्योपैथी लो और इसको ठीक करो भाई वो होम्योपैथी को फिर से पांच साल उसको पढ़ाओ वो डॉक्टर को अगर ऐसा बोलता है तो <laughs> गलत है वो एक्सिलेंट मनीषा क्लियर it's <laughs> clear clear headed you are and i really enjoyed your talk okay <laughs> friends i think it's quite late and i think hong kong is also late so thank you so much vanisha it was truly an enlightening talk and your so involvement in talking that really <laughs> won me over maine bola na i ask you that you are from bombay nahi i am from nagpur नागपुर विदर्भा चलो ठीक है बॉम्बे महाराष्ट्र है जय महाराष्ट्र आई कुड सेंस दैट यू आर डेफिनेटली फ्रॉम समवेयर हियर बिकॉज ऑल योर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ गुंडा गिरी वॉज करेक्ट सो थैंक यू क्या है पता है यही यही एक चीज है ये जो होता है ना सबसे सबसे ज्यादा आजकल लोग पता है क्यों बीमार पड़ते हैं हम लोगों को क्या पड़ी रहती पता है क्या ये क्या सोचेगा वो क्या सोचेगा वो क्या अब भाई सोचने दो कुछ भी सोचे अभी आज मेरा टॉक था वर्षा जी को पता है कि कोई प्रिपरेशन नहीं है मेरा हम लोग इतने बिजी थे मैं भूल भी गई थी कि मेरा टॉक है तो दीपक को बोला भाई मेरा तो टॉक है अभी तो मैं कौन से कपड़े पहनू तो ये बोलता है भाई मेरा टॉप होता तो मैं सोचता पीपीटी क्या बनाना है क्या बोलना है और तू बोल रही कौन सा लिपस्टिक लगाओ कौन सा कपड़े पहनो मैंने कहा भाई तो वो इम्पोर्टेंट है तो ये मनीषा दैट दैट शोज दैट यू आर अ कॉन्फिडेंट पर्सन 
कि यार बा, बात तो मैं डेफिनेटली कर लूंगी अच्छी तरह से अच्छा कम दिखना से कम भी तो लुक गुड ऑलमोस्ट आप तो अच्छा दिखना जरूरी नहीं है तो मैंने कहा भाई पॉइंट तो कुछ भी तो ये जो होता है ना जो तुम हो क्योंकि कोई भी परफेक्ट नहीं है कोई भी परफेक्ट नहीं है सबके दिल में दिमाग में वही सब कुछ चलता रहता है लेकिन हमारा यही रहता है कि हम कैसे दिखाए या लोग हमें जज कैसे ना करें सबसे बड़ा रोग क्या कहेंगे लोग अगर ये ये भी आज आप मेरे टॉप से लेके जाते हो ना तो भी मैं बोलूंगी कि भाई भगवान पावला तुम्हारा भगवान असम वाटेल थिंक लाइक दैट वेरी नाइस सबसे बड़ा रोग क्या कहेंगे लोग सबसे बड़ा रोग क्या कहेंगे लोग लोग कुछ भी बोलने दो जो तुमको लगता है वो करो भाई उस जेल में रहना नहीं है अपने को और बच्चा बन के रहो कुछ उखाड़ नहीं लेंगे हम लोग बड़ा बन के भी सब मस्त मस्त बीमारियां आ जाएंगी और कुछ भी नहीं होने वाला है बच्चे बन के रहो और एंजॉय करो सुपर सुपर मनीषा थैंक यू सो मच इट वाज रियली वंडरफुल आई थिंक एवरीबॉडी एंजॉयड एंड इवन ऑन फेसबुक देयर वर मेनी पीपल हु वर टॉकिंग यू कैन गो देयर एंड हैव अ लुक एट इट आल्सो लेटर सो थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स अगेन फॉर कमिंग इन थैंक यू Thank Manisha, you, Varsha ji. Let us all. Thank you very much. Let's give Manisha a reaction. Did we enjoy her talk? Thank you so much. Thank you. It was Thank so nice to you. talk here. Thank you.